Aloha, my friends, and welcome back to Maui Craft Kitchen. Today marks the beginning of a series that I like to call Ma! The Meatloaf! Why does meatloaf always have to be a beef-based slab of meat with ketchup on it? I have bigger plans for meatloaf than just this age-old classic. And that's why I came up with today's recipe for chicken meatloaf with broccoli and smoked cheddar. It doesn't end there. I'm also going to show you a great recipe for a jalapeno and cheese gravy to go with it. So forget everything you thought you knew about meatloaf, because we're gonna work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. Whenever I can, I take the opportunity to grind my own meat. Not only can I fine tune the grind size, but in this case, I can even dial in on a thigh to breast ratio that suits my taste buds. Next up, we need to trim the broccoli off of the stem and get it ready for blanching. Do not throw away the stems. You can use them for anything from juicing to soups. Now just quickly tear them up into some smaller pieces. Bring a pot of water to a rolling boil on high heat and drop in your broccoli. Give it a quick stir and let the broccoli cook for one to two minutes or until it just becomes tender but still has a touch of snap to it. While the broccoli cooks, grab yourself a bowl with water and plenty of ice. When the broccoli is just tender, go ahead and pull it from the hot water. Drop it directly into the ice bath so it can chill out for a minute. Pull the blanched broccoli from the ice bath and let it drain well. In a small bowl, mix together the breadcrumbs, half and half, and egg. This will give the breadcrumbs a head start to hydration land and make our final product much more moist. Go ahead and dice up that onion. I'm using my standard five by nine by two inch loaf pan today. I'm just going to get it nice and lubed up now with a touch of oil. All we have to do now is combine all of our ingredients together and mix it up. In goes the onion, our blanched to perfection broccoli, toss in our nicely hydrated breadcrumb mixture, the basis of all flavor, salt. In goes the dried spices. You can chop your fresh garlic if you don't have a press, but I highly recommend picking one up if you don't have one already. Take your smoked cheddar and cut it into strips about a half an inch thick. Now break it up into little smoked chunkers. Time for the best part. Get in there and get dirty. Squish everything together until all of the ingredients are evenly dispersed throughout the mix. Scoop it right into our lubed loaf pan, pressing it down firmly to remove any and all air pockets. We will bake this in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for one hour and 20 minutes, rotating it every half hour or so to ensure even cooking. 
While our loafer is cooking, we're going to start our cheese sauce by chopping up the jalapeno. Get the butter melting over medium heat. Once it is melted, add in the flour and keep stirring as you cook it for about one minute. Add in about one quarter or so of the cream and whisk it up until it becomes smooth. Add in some more cream and do the same thing. Repeat this process until just about all of your cream is gone. Toss the jalapenos in the pot, the salt, and the pepper. Bring the mixture up until it is just below a boil. Once it's hot, drop the temp down to medium low and start adding your cheese in small intervals. Whisk it in until it's smooth before adding more cheese, similar to what we just did. You can add a shot of cream if you think it's getting too thick. It's all about finding that balance of cheese flavor and the perfect consistency. Look at that beautiful cheese sauce. You can tell a good sauce by its ability to stick to the back of a spoon. When the meatloaf comes out of the oven and you're done marveling at the beautiful creation that you just made, wrap it in plastic and let it sit on the counter for half an hour before slicing. Time to cut this bad boy up. Slap it on a plate and cover it in our cheesy jalapeno gravy. It certainly doesn't get any better than this. I told you this wasn't going to be your average run-of-the-mill meatloaf. Was I right? Hell yeah, I was. This meatloaf takes the metaphorical meatloaf volume knob, turns it up to 10, passes it, and then breaks it off. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. Thank you so much for watching. Many mahalas and much aloha.